Welcome to iLecture Online and now we're going to talk about the average velocity of a gas molecule again using the, the um, uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of velocities for, a, for molecules in a gas. Here's a, a picture of, of it again. Notice that it's kind of an offset normalization curve and therefore the average is a little bit to the right of the peak. So what is that number equal to? How do we figure that out? Well, what we have to realize is that this is kind of like a probability function. And if we take the integral of that function and integrate it from zero to infinity, we should get one. And that's because that is then normalized. So the probability that all the molecules will be underneath this curve, of course, is equal to one when you go from zero to infinity. So if you now want to say, how many molecules are there, for example, in this particular region? Well, then you would integrate it from x1 to x2, that very same curve. Now, how do we find the average velocity? The v average would be equal to this integral from 0. Like, actually, I don't want to move it all the way over to the right like that. So, so it would be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of f of v dv. Now you realize that if I leave it like that, I don't get the average velocity, I just get one, the totality, 100% of all the molecules. If we then multiply each of those molecules by its corresponding velocity and I integrate that, I get the average velocity. So then I have to multiply this times v and now I can go ahead and get the average velocity. All right, so what I need to do then is I need to take this function, multiply it times v, integrate it from zero to infinity, and I get the average velocity. Don't get scared yet, that's the mean equation, but actually there's a way in which you can make that a lot easier. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to multiply this times v, so v times f of v is equal to the very same equation, simply by this becoming v cubed. So we have m divided by 2 pi kt to the 3 halves power v cubed instead of v squared, e to the minus mv squared divided by 2 kt. Now again, like we did in the previous video, to make this really messy equation into something that looks a lot easier, I'm going to, going to take this whole piece right here and call it a constant one because nothing in here varies if we keep the temperature the same. And in the exponent here, the m, the 2, k, and t are all constants. I'm going to call that constant 2. So v times the function of v is equal to constant 1, v cubed, e to the minus constant 2, v squared. And now we don't have that mean looking equation anymore. Now, if we take that, if we put that into the integral, we can now say that the v average is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of this quantity right here, which is c1 v cubed e to the minus c2 v squared. And of course, I can take the c1 and move it outside the integral sign because that's just a constant, so let me just simply put it right there to even make it a little bit more simple. Now, don't forget, I still need my dv, so I need to put a dv here at the end. Hmm, how do I integrate that? Well, I got a little help. I went to my book with integral tables, I looked it up and go, wow, this is pretty good right here. This looks exactly like this. So instead of an x, we have a v there, so it doesn't matter. So we have x to the 2n plus 1 power times e to the minus ax squared, dx is equal to that. Hmm, is there a similarity? Well, if n is equal to 1, 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3, v cubed, that matches, and so we have um, minus ax squared, now of course instead of the a we have a c, and x squared is v squared, a perfect match to this equation, so that means I can integrate that and make it look just like that. So this is equal to, and of course I can't forget my uh, <clears throat> uh, c1 here, um, let's see here, so we have c1 times that quantity right here, so I need an n factorial. Now we said that n had to be 1 to make this match, so 1 factorial is simply 1 divided by 2 times uh, a. Now what was a again? a was a substitution for this c2. So c2 and a are the same, which is this quantity 
right here. That's my A right there that needs to go down here. So we have A, which is M divided by 2KT, and that is raised to the N plus 1 power. Now N was 1, so that is therefore raised to the second power. Okay, so now I simply have to simplify that, work that out. I still have my C1 here, which is this quantity right here, so let me write that down here. So V average is equal to C1, which is 4 pi, times M divided by 2 pi kT to the 3 halves power. That's my C1 right here, times 1 over this squared. Hmm, I'm going to now, since I'm dividing by fraction, I can simply flip that around, and so this becomes um, 2 kT squared in the numerator, so we have 2 kT the squared divided by m, this whole thing would be squared, and I still have a 1 over 2 there, so I'll put that in there. There we go, so I just put the 2 kT on the top, m is still in the denominator, that is squared, this is squared, I have the one halves, so all that looks good, and this right here was this constant right there, and now all I have to do is algebraically simplify that, and I have my v average. Let's see here, I have a m and an m, I have a 2kt and a 2kt, so look all the similarity, I'm going to rewrite this equation just a little bit better, right here, so we have v average is equal to, I still have my 4 pi, I'm going to put the 3 halves, the 1 over, let's see, 2k, no, the pi needs to go like this. So we have 1 over pi to the 3 halves power. So I took my 1 over pi out, so I'm left with an m 2kt here, and I have a 2kt over m there, so that makes a perfect match. And I think I started a little bit too high. Let me try this again. Let me lower my equations. I don't want to run into that right there. So we have v average is equal to, we have 4 pi times 1 over pi to the 3 halves. And then I have an m over 2 kt to the 3 halves. And I'm multiplying that times 1 half times 2 kt over m to the second power. And that's it. Now, the reason I did it like that is because I have an m over 2 kt and a 2 kt over m. This is to the 3 halves power. That's squared. So the 3 halves of that squared negates this, and I'm left with a 1 half power of this. So that means I have v average is equal to 4 pi times 1 over pi to the 3 halves times 1 half. I'll put the 1 half here. And then this multiplied times this will give me, remember, the bases are the same. No, actually, the bases are not the same. The bases are opposite, so they're going to cancel each other out. So this can be written. Let me explain what I'm doing here. So here, if I have a to the second power, this is the same as a to the 3 halves power times a to the 1 half power. There you can see when the bases are the same, I simply add exponents, I get this again. So I'm taking the a to the 3 halves power, and I'm multiplying times this, since this is the reverse of that, they cancel each other out, and I'm simply left with this portion right here. So I'm left with a 2kt over m to the 1 half power. All right, a little bit more simplification. 4 and 1 half, well, that becomes 2. And 1 over pi to the 3 halves power times pi, there's a similar situation again, have pi to the first, and 1 over pi to the 3 halves, that leaves me 1 over pi to the 1 half power. So v average is equal to 4 divided by 2, which is 2, times 1 over pi to the 1 half power, times 2 kT over m to the 1 half power. And then I can combine these two. And so I have v average is equal to 2 times 2 kT over pi m to the 1 half power, of course that's a square root, and then if I bring this 2 in here, then I have to of course square that to bring it inside the square root, that becomes a 4 times 2 is 8, so I have v average is equal to, and I'll use the square root symbol now instead of 1 half power, that would become 8 kt over pi m. And of course, k is the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number, 
m is the molecular mass, not the molar mass, so I can also write this as the square root of 8rt over pi times the molar mass. Now, remember the two other velocities that we found before. We found the RMS velocity, VRMS, to be equal to the square root of 3, mm, I don't have to use k, I'll use r, so we have 3rt over the molar mass. We had the average velocity as the square root of 2rt over the molar mass. And then where does this one fall in? Well, what's a divided by pi? Well, pi is about 3. So a divided by pi is less than 3, but it's greater than 2, which means that value falls right in between these two right there. It's smack in between. So, oh, oh. This was not average. This was most probable. I don't want to mess you up. There you go. Most probable. And so the average velocity falls right in between. So going back to this uh, graph right here, the most probable velocity is this one right here. Right? So this was V most probable. The V average is slightly bigger. And then the V RMS is slightly bigger than the V average. So this would be over here V RMS. And that's how you find the three velocities that are important in the gas distribution of velocities. And uh, again, a quick review. We took the same uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann equation for the gas distribution of the velocities of the, of, the, of the molecules in a gas. We multiply it times V. We integrated it to get the average velocity. We just had to do a little bit of an algebraic trick. And then we can compare it to the two other ones to see of how to find the three velocities of the molecules in a gas.